Wow. If you had to have a Hollywood actress and producer as your doctor, you couldn't ask for anyone better than our final guest today. As Dr. Quinn, medicine woman, she saved lives on an almost daily basis in a small town in 19th century Colorado, winning all our hearts and a Golden Globe for Best Actress in a TV series in the process. <gasps> Please welcome Jane Seymour. Great. Hello. Hello. Oh, Welcome oh. to the program. Lovely Thank to you. See what you. fun is this? <laughs> what no, when, is when this? you were doing Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman, yes. did you realize how big it was going to be? Because it became huge. I had no idea. In fact, when they did the show, they hired me the night before I started. Really? And, um, and, and they did everything in their power to make sure that it never went on. The network didn't believe in it, and it right. kept. You know, and it, it, it made the top ten the first two nights. And, then and also, it, it did so well in, years. internationally as well. Yes, it's still playing in 98 countries. Jane, after all those yes. years of playing a doctor, do yes. people still recognise you as the doctor? <laughs> and do they think you know anything about medicine? <laughs> Absolutely. I get stopped all the time and they say, you know, this is aching, you know, this problem. And of course, the other thing is everyone thinks I'm an American. Because yeah. I was an American doctor, let's face yes. it. Yeah. But now, you know, with wedding crashes, they have other questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, the bit that we saw there, obviously, which summed up the series quite nicely, was, uh, you know, we, who are you? We want a real doctor. It was one of the first girl mm. power or women power type of programs, really, wasn't it? It was, and I get the most amazing letters from people all the time who say that their daughter became a doctor because of Dr. Quinn yeah. and then I get really great letters that somebody will say that their son said you know women women can be doctors too so I think it had an amazing impact much more than I ever imagined. That's amazing. Yes. Why, um, so why are you here at the moment? I am here I, I did a photo shoot for CC for the you know the clothing thing you see on the high street and I also designed jewelry so I, I came and I Fair did enough. all of that so that was fun and you were talking about fat days and Madonna and everything. Now don't start this, no, I don't want you to know <laughs> this is the dress you want okay yes. the, there is room here so yes. Do they do, do they do it in bigger sizes? They do. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They do. They do it in your size. They do it in every size. But you were also commenting on the royal wedding. I was you? commenting on the royal wedding. Oh my God. How did? What did you say about the hats? Oh yeah. <laughs> Can I just mention that hat? Well, uh, there were a couple of hats that were a little dodgy, and I... I oh, you're I, too I, tactful. I, I, <laughs> too tactful, I, 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 Did you have to be I, polite? No, no. No, well, no, no. I, no, no. I, did, I did say that they reminded me of a panto I might have been in once. <laughs> yeah. But, um, no, I, I thought all in all, I thought that the, the, the hats and everything were great. I thought the Queen really looked mm. amazing with that hat. And uh, I thought that uh, Carol Middleton looked perfect and elegant. Yes. And, uh, and I thought the dress was amazing. Be British, though. So okay. proud. They had me covering this for two and a half weeks. What am I going to talk about for two and a half weeks? So what I did is I called up Prince William's um, secretary and I said, what would William and Kate like, you know, and how am I going to handle this? And they gave me some numbers of people I could call and things I could talk about and everything like that. And uh, they said all they want is that everyone enjoys the day. And I, I think you have to say it was the most incredible day ever. Yeah. And I jumped over the barricades because I was in that, you know, that I where all this... Yeah. Yes, they, they carried me over in this very slinky dress. It was a bit of a... Dodgy manoeuvre, you know. <laughs> Dodgy manoeuvre there, no panty lines, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go any further. But I did go right there in the middle of, uh, you know, in Buckingham Palace and everything. And I just thought the way the, the, way the, the bobbies handled everything, you know, the way that mm. all the people were there. And people had said to me, oh, it's going to be so dangerous in London. Yes. And it was quite the opposite, you know. There was nothing, nobody was drunk, nobody was behaving but badly. But America, Americans, if, uh, uh, back home in America, how important was it to them? Really, really important. They're still talking about it. But I think what I ended up doing, and, and what was really fun, was I'm kind of like an Ameri-Brit, an Americanized, Americanized Brit, can't even say that. Yeah. But uh, I understand what the Americans don't understand and don't know about Britain. And so I took them on a tour of Bath and, you know, showed them other things in the countryside. So I took them down the pub and, you know, gave them a sort of a taste what of... What about all those like. weird uniforms in the army? Did you have to talk them through all the no. medals and everything else? <laughs> no, well, I, of course, I saw Beckham was wearing it on the wrong side. Yeah, did you and, point that out? Well, I didn't actually live point that out and and I got one of those but I didn't think and you're not supposed to wear it no, at the no. wedding. Oh. I don't take mine up, mine stays in the You could have worn yours on this show. We wouldn't have minded that. <laughs> <laughs> now you well, always you always strike me as a lady who's very happy with your lot because your lot is good. My lot is good. What uh, what did you aspire towards happiness wise when when you were younger? Well um, I was like your previous guest. I wanted to be a ballerina that's all I ever wanted. Okay. But I was born with flat feet and a speech impediment so that's how I got into ballet. You could be a quiet and ballerina. remedial <laughs> remedial stuff. So I ended up not being able 
able to pronounce my R's. I, I would say, a wound a wuggy wax a wuggy. So anyway, basically, when you go to America, if you do an American accent, it's totally R's. Okay. That's all you do. So I, I kind of ended up a dancer for a while. I didn't get in the royal like her, but I did dance to the cure off for a little bit. And then I got injured and I became an actress. And I think I always had a passion for the arts. Uh -huh. and, and that's what I, I have six kids. And so that's what I kind of, you know, I think it's really important to say, is it important to be happy? Yeah. I think it's really important to be happy. I think it's really important to have a passion for something and to, you know, to follow it, whether you actually get to do it as a career or not. Mm -hmm. You know, so people say, oh, I love to act, you know, and I, I say, well, it might be really hard to actually get a job as an actress, but there's no reason why you can't do it community theatre or something like How that. How did you get the part in the Bond film? <sighs> well, uh, they were looking for a virgin and there weren't very many oh. left. <laughs> <laughs> And I looked like one. You didn't one. have to prove your I didn't, I didn't. I didn't. But it was actually quite funny because I didn't have... Um, I, I didn't... Th my agent kept saying, you know, because my hair was really long. I used to sit on it those days. And he said, uh, you know, got to put your hair up. But they have to see your hair up and down. So I went and I bought this big furry hat, stuck all my hair up in the hat, got a jacket that had a bit furry collar. And uh, I came in and the first thing Harry Saltzman said was, take off that hat. And I went, OK. And then he said, take off that coat. And I did. And then he offered me the part. That was it. I thought you were going to say, take, take off something else. <laughs> 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 keep going, keep going. No, it's the wrong. Yeah, I was, yeah, do you remember, I'm the Bond girl that was the virgin. You know, yeah. the high priestess of Tara. And it's so long ago. It's 40 years ago. You know that. It is amazing. That, I mean, it's it must crazy. Be, do, do you like it when people bring it up? Because to, to us, you, you are one of the iconic Bond girls. And I know it, it must feel like an awfully long time for you, but it's Repeated so often on telly, yeah. it's like yesterday for us. Apparently you get me every Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, speaking you know of which, you were talking about um, whether you should treat a man like a, like a seven-year-old. What's your take on that? Well, I, I think that the seven-year-old um, is in every man. And I think you, it really becomes apparent when you throw a ball at them. You either give them a ball to catch, <laughs> throw or hit. Yeah. You know, then they become seven-year-olds, don't they? And they're very happy. Is that what you do? Absolutely. I, I'm surrounded. Honey, I'm home. Yes. Bitch. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wouldn't really work with my first two husbands, who I'm, by the way, going to see after this show. <laughs> Good. Together. That would be a much more interesting story. Well, how Should how one mix ex-husbands? <laughs> well, do you know, between all of us, we can do very yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely to meet you, Jane. You Welcome too. To the Thank show you so much. Jane Seymour, everyone. <laughs>